Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, first of all, I, I want to um, give a big thanks to everyone who uh, is joining today, all the students that are here. Um, I'm really happy to see your attendance because this is our kickoff panel, our kickoff program for the Library Live um, presentations that we're going to have this fall. Library Live is uh, sort of like an experiment, but also a site for um, a lot of different, like trying out different ideas to help our students. And um, the, we, I really wanted to center our students' voices in Library Live. So in addition to getting workshops on how to use the databases, how to start research, what are some fundamental skills for research, library research, um, I also want to bring in students, um, Cal State LA students, to participate in these uh, in these library live panels, so they can tell you about how they use the library and what sort of resources and tips they want to impart to you, student to student, so you can also have uh, maximize your success at Cal State LA. Um, so I'm Leticia Terrones. And I'm a librarian at Cal State LA. And one of my main uh, jobs is to coordinate our library instruction. Um, and what that means is that when you come in as a student at Cal State LA, um, one of the things that you're gonna be asked to do is to do research. So you have to find academic articles, find scholarly articles. You have to know how to search your books. You have to know how to cite, all this stuff. and um, my job is to facilitate that process for students. Um, and so uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about today are like the different resources that the library um, has to help you in that process of um, doing college, college research. Um, does that all make sense to everybody? Um, feel free, the participants, everyone who's in the room, you can throw a thumbs up. You can even put into the chat um any sort of questions okay wonderful so um we wanted today is our kickoff session and i was really um honored this summer to meet a lot of transfer students um through um through stephen wilson who is one of the the assistant director for eop educational opportunity program um you can also yeah throw a clap if you um if you know stephen um and um over the summer, I did a, a quick presentation on how to use the library. And um, that's where I met one of the students who's going to talk today, Julio Velasquez. Um, and I thought, you know, I want to do library live and center student voices. Let's start off with transfer students, because a lot of times transfer students, um, there's like very specific information that you need um, and also specific tips that are important for transfer students to know that might not be you know, tips that like a first year student would know or want to know. Um, and so I wanted to really just highlight um, and be specific about talking about the library in terms of how transfer students could use the library. Um, and that made me think of my other student, Lorena um, Corona. If you want to raise your hand, Lorena, or throw a little emoji in the chat so we know who you are. And Lorena is a student that I had met last semester, or actually when I first started last year, um, through the Dreamers um, Resource Center. I think we met at like a community um, panel that we had for Dreamers. And Lorena is also a transfer student. And she and I have been talking about this idea of starting a transfer student library club for specifically to um, like bring together transfer students um, and connect them with library resources. And that's something that we actually started this year. Um, at the end of today's um, session, I'm going to provide more information, but just really quickly in the chat, I want to um, throw right here in the chat some information about um, our Transfer Student Library Club because we are recruiting transfer students to participate in this club, and it's kind of like a homegrown club. We're still sort of developing it. We meet every Friday from 2 to 3 um, in that Zoom room, which is this, which is this Zoom room, the same one. And um, we're going to start organizing um, about like developing our club. We'll talk more about it today in the session. Um, and so 
Uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to provide um, a quick bio um, to introduce Julio and Lorena. And then I'm going to um, hand it over to Steven, who's going to introduce himself. And then during the during the session, at any point, students, we want to invite you to throw in questions into the chat. Also, um, if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, you're welcome to do that. And the last 10 minutes of the session, which will be around like 520 to 530, we're going to open it up to a, a question and answer. Does that all sound about good? All right, so um, let me go ahead and get started by um, introducing um, Lorena Corona. So Lorena, you could go ahead and raise your hand too, or you can put um, an emoji in the chat, in the a reaction so we know who you are. So Lorena is a senior majoring in rehabilitation and counseling. Um, Lorena transferred from PCC, Pasadena City College, and um, her she writes my, that her major is counseling and rehabilitation psychotherapies with people. Um, and um, part of her goal is, um, is she wants to continue on to earn a master's degree in psychology. Um, she's intending to do that after um, 2022. So um, the goal is to graduate in this coming year, spring 2022, and then continue on to a graduate program. And um, also, um, she likes um, to volunteer with people. Spanish is her first language, um, but she also speaks English and she enjoys um, speaking also Italian and Mandarin, which are two languages that she's um, that she's learning. All right, so um, that is uh, Lorena. She's going to talk a little bit more. Um, and then Julio, um, go ahead if you want to raise your hand, Julio. Um, Julio Velasquez, this is Julio's first semester at Cal State LA. Julio transferred from Santa Monica College, SMC, um, and is majoring in communication with an interest in public health. And Julio also is aspiring to graduate school. He is, um, he's, he, after his earning his, his uh, BA, uh, he wants to go on and earn a PhD with some of the long-term goals of his research being providing information uh, to queer communities and people of color communities about health and other resources. And something that's really interesting to know about Julio is that he's completed 13 marathons, wow. And um, he's also done um, half marathons, including the LA Marathon, San Francisco Marathon, Long Beach o OC, and the Hawaii Marathon. Okay, so if you have any questions about that too, uh, you can put them in the chat. And uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Steven if you would like to introduce yourself. Okay, um, thank you so much, Leti. Um, and, uh, you know, big ups to Lorena and Julio. Um, I, I myself was a transfer student, uh, PCC, Go Lancers, and one of my best friends, Sherry Bradford, runs the Black Collegians program out at SMC. So good to see the community colleges well represented. Um, for those of you that have not met me, my name is Stephen Wilson. Um, as Lydia indicated, I am the uh, assistant director for the educational opportunity program here at Cal State LA. And I would be remiss if I <clears throat> did not introduce one of my partners who's in here. Um, she is the transfer counselor for EOP. So can you give them a big wave, Miss Veronica Carrero in the house? Thank you. So happy to see um, all of my students or most of my students here. This is great. So happy to be here. Hi, Leticia. Yes. Yes, yes, and thank you, Veronica, uh, Veronica, for sending out, you know, so many of the good notifications to make our students aware of this great opportunity. And one of the great things being here in the new student services building on the fourth floor, you know, we have EOP, we have the DRC right next to us. So we're uh, still uh, connected and we're moving the needle in regards to uh, things like equity. And one of the uh, great equity pieces is what we're presenting today, information on literacy and how to use resources, especially with so much information regarding um, Grad Initiative 2025 and having 
uh, folks just better understand the role that we're playing. And so as so many of us from underserved com uh, communities are making the transition, um, not just into the four-year institution, but out into the world professionally, you know, it's going to be incumbent upon us to create opportunities for others. So, you know, myself been a longtime employee for the Educational Opportunity Program, uh, the flagship equity program in the California State University. Um, I am so excited to be here and to, um, um, to just present perspectives from a number of different angles that might touch you all as, um, as global citizens, right? And so it, it is so great to see Lorena and Julio initiate this effort with the guidance from Letty. We're blessed to have, uh, you know, not just a university librarian, but one assigned, you know, to, uh, um, you know, our department that has provided us tremendous support and opportunities. So um, I look forward to caucusing with you all today. And it's a nice, full, robust crowd. So thank you all for coming. And thank you for the opportunity, Letty. OK, thank you so much. Um, I want to start off with a question for our transfer students, uh, panelists, Julio and Lorena. Um, maybe we can begin um, with uh, Lorena first. If you want to share a little bit about yourself and your journey to Cal State LA. You might want to tell us about, you know, what school you came from. And then also, I'm going to pair that up with another question about um, educational goals and aspirations, because really, um, you know, I think one of the things that distinguishes our transfer students is that our transfer students have very strong educational aspirations. We have very strong educational goals and reasons for you know making that effort of transferring and doing all the things. So um, I'm going to put those two questions in the chat, and I'll start off with um, with Lorena. Tell us a little bit about your journey to Cal State LA, and also your educational goals and aspirations. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lorena Corona. I'm happy to see you, uh, Ms. Uh, Veronica Carrion. She is my advisor. I'm part of the EOP. EOP. And uh, Pasadena City College is part of my dreams. And I'm transferred and uh, even size star attended uh, Castle Lake in 2020. Uh, I'm a um, person for the first generation immigrant in the comment, no traditional um, Latina uh, students. I'm born in Mexico City. I'm working toward a degree at uh, rehabilitation social with emphasis in psychology. Even size and star attended uh, in Castle but almost finished uh, in 22 spring and I'm working every single day to get uh, maintain my I'll start uh, doing GP a uh, 4.0 and I'm participate in events and programs of the education like EOP uh, library DRC all right thanks so much Lorena um and um, students, I put those questions that I'm asking to um, our panelists. Feel free to participate in the chat as well if you wanted to drop in what your educational dreams, educational aspirations are as well. Um, all right, Julio, it's your turn. Hi, yeah, hi everybody. My name is Julio Velasquez. I'm very thrilled to be here having this conversation with um, many of my um, some friends and ex. Um, classmate from the EOP program where Mr. Steven Wilson and Veronica Carrera leads. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting them over the summer. And uh, that's how I was connected with Letty, which is one of the, library, the librarians in Cal State LA. One of my goals aspiration is to um, just to proceed my uh, graduate school and uh, complete a PhD providing help for uh, community colors and also queer people. Um, one of the 
moments that I realized that it was important for me to go back to school was during the pandemic specifically. And I, I came to this moment of self-realization that uh, um, this moment in life either makes you or breaks you. So I decided just to go back to school and here we are, you know, working hard every day to accomplish those goals and, and basically uh, do the best that I can. In my case, oh, go ahead, Lorena. Additional, uh, I want to explain just a little bit about my journaling has not too easy because I'm here when I had uh, uh, 15 years and I'm not the United States and there is for more opportunities. And I have learned how the navigator began new environments, balance, and multiple identities. Uh, I support my mother and myself and I'm trying my best every single day. And when she passed away for cancer and out of the pandemic, was not fast, was not easy for me. I had a difficult emotional mentality, economical. So the pandemic has been special, difficult, and I do not work had a stable minutes income. That's the things I wanna tell to everybody. Uh, don't stop, think positive, and you can do it. It's part of my inspiration. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Lorena, because I think a lot of times, um, you know, uh, the people that we interact with on campus, our professors, librarians, even other peers, really don't know all the things that we're carrying, you know, especially right now during the time of the pandemic, um, and then in the move towards like going back to campus, there's still a lot of, um, there's still a lot, like in addition to all the other stuff we had pre-pandemic, there's a lot of other additional challenges that come with it. And I wanted to ask you um, to kind of think about, um, or if you could share with us, since um, campus has reopened, um, what, how has the library played a role in um, you kind of coming back to campus? Have you been to the library since it opened? And then if you have, like, tell us with some with some details and specificity, um, how you how have you used the space? And then um, after you share, um, I'll ask um, uh, Stephen as well if um, if you could share a little bit about like your experience with transfer students using the library. You know, is that is that something like a a, a, a resource for success, something like that. So, um, Julio, do you want to start us off for this one, um, uh, telling us about how you use the library and the library spaces? Yeah, thank you very much for asking that question, actually. Uh, the, uh, the library space has been very instrumental for, for me personally because um, I'm taking five classes at this moment and I only have 10 minutes within classes with the transition of going from one class to another one. One of those classes is in Zoom and the other one is in person. So what I decided to do this semester is actually uh, shaking out a book, um, uh, room from the library and actually um, do my Zoom class in the library and um, just bring my laptop and my, you know, everything that I need to bring. And that's the way that I have utilized the library space. In addition as well, um, I, have, um, I have actually reached out to the librarian, Mrs. Uh, Leticia Terrones, for additional help when it comes to citation research and um, just grammatical format that she has uh, system in, in many in many of my writings. So I feel that the library has a lot to offer to a lot of students. And um, it's important that we have this conversation because a lot of students don't know that they, they did actually do this, um, check out a, a room and do their classes there. And um, it's important for everybody to know this because sometimes we don't have the time or the resources to actually do that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Lorena, do you wanna um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, have you used uh, the library space since it's opened? Um, I'm gonna actually put the questions um, in the chat. Um, if you can talk a little bit with some detail, some specificity about like how do you actually use the library space and resources? Lorena? 
Sure, thank you for asking me, Miss Letty. And my uh, personality, I take in uh, five classes in this moment and I add my internship. Uh, part of my successful is uh, some tools and about the library. And uh, I'm trying uh, every single day, usually, <laughs> three times for a week or a couple of times for a week, uh, open with Miss Leticia. Leticia is part of my mentor too. And uh, library, they had a very good uh, schedule when you had any question, any support. Another one, uh, it's very good, uh, the support I ITS, the teach support, because in this area, they support to you with computer. Uh, in my, in my uh, has difficult for me place uh, to to the access. I don't have an internet home, so uh, this area they support to you with a hotspot, and uh, we had a writing centers too, and uh, it's very very uh, support, very positive positive benefits for 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 uh, work and get a very good grade. But especially uh, Miss Leticia um, Terrones is part of my uh, support uh, when I uh, open the appointments with her, when attended uh, the Friday's uh, support group. So. Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that, um, Lorena, because um, like I, I, I'm not sure if all the students here know that for every single major that we study at Cal State LA, there's an assigned librarian. And I happen to be assigned, I'm more sort of a generalist librarian. And so um, like all of the, I'm the assigned librarian for EOP. So in EOP, there's all the majors, right? There's all kinds of different majors. So everyone here, you're welcome to make a consultation appointment with me. Um, my email, I dropped it into the chat, it's in the chat. Usually I have um, my reference open hours on Tuesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. is when I meet with students for, for 30 minute appointments. But you can also make appointments to meet with like the sociology librarian or the education librarian or the any other librarian that's specific. Um, Kelsey, thank you so much. She, Kelsey just put my email there. So if you wanna screen grab it. Now I wanna, before we um, go to Steven really quick, I wanna ask Julio, and Lorena, if you could do like a day in the life of like what your day looks like when you're on campus at the library, because I know Julio, you, you you described to me how sometimes you transition, or actually this semester you transition from class to class virtually. Can you do, can you talk both of you a little bit about the day in your life? Yeah, like what time I, do you uh, get there and all the things that happen? Yeah, I usually get there around um, 10, uh, 10 a.m. and um, uh, the usual process is is this, the routine is pretty much the same. Uh, um, so I pretty much like to concentrate and focus particularly in the in those classes that I'm taking that day. So what I like to do is uh, isolate myself in a way and just because I there's a lot of maybe noise or background conversation going on. What I like to do just go to a third floor, uh, which is uh, typically more. Um, uh, less crowded than the second floor. So uh, I particularly like to just um, find a plug, a computer plug where I can actually plug in my computer and just ensure, make, make sure that the battery doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't run out. And uh, pretty much just uh, uh, study there for like 10 a.m. to like 2 or 3 p.m. And um, also when, when I'm in the library, I also, seek to do research within the uh, library uh, website, which is very helpful. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's my regular normal routine when I'm in, in the library. How about you, Marina? It might get it's a little different because uh, um, my regular day, it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in Castell A because I'm working in my internship. But I use in Canvas and I use uh, uh, open uh, deployments. For example, I'm part of the EOP. 
So I'm trying to open uh, appointments with my uh, counseling, or if you had any questions, or for example, if you, my computer is not working, EOP support to me, EOP uh, help me in everything where I need it. Uh, Ms. Veronica Carrero, she is my advisor. She's very, uh, oh my God, she's very nice person. Uh, she had a very empathy and support students. So uh, when I need something, they help me. On the other hand, uh, Ms. Leticia Terrones, she had a link and I recommend a uh, follow to her because she's an amazing uh, person. She's a professional person. When you go to WW Castellay uh, Library, you can open uh, the appointments and uh, for consultation, re uh, for rich consultation, uh, toppings, uh, essays, whatever you need. And no matter what if you are in home or or you go to uh, Castle all the time these kind of the resources are open for the students. Personality in my case, uh, I contact to EOP, they help me. I contact to uh, library research, they help me. So what I'm hearing is that um, I heard a few things that's, that stood out. Number one is, um, I think Julio, you said this, that the longer you stay at the library, the more that you build kind of like a habit um, for actually like just getting all your stuff done. We all know that sometimes at home or somewhere else, we have a lot of different people pulling for us, right? Like they, they need our attention or we're responsible for taking care of other people like that, or we have to go to work. So the more that you can stay at the library, the more that you can get done and stay concentrated. I also heard um, from Lorena that you have a number of different resources or mentors that you pull from and you make you make use of those services. You make those appointments, right? Um, and so I think it's really important, especially, um, you know, uh, transfer students, I imagine that you have all kinds of different responsibilities and things you have to handle and take care of. So don't be afraid to ask for help because that's one of the primary for instance, I'll speak for the research consultations. That's one of the primary things that we do as librarians is we provide assistance with, you know, I have to write this paper. The, the professor wants three peer reviewed articles. What is peer review articles? How do I find them? I'm supposed to go to the database, like little questions like that. Once you kind of get through a research consultation, once you kind of get the, um, the understanding of the process, then you learn it. And then for the next time you have to do the assignment, it's something that you you have already in your skill toolbox. So with that, um, I'll move on to Stephen um, to tell us a little bit about his experience with students, their use of the library. Yes, uh, thank you, Letty. Uh, one of the things that I you know that I do want to convey is that um, I'm a graduate student myself, um, uh, working on my doctoral dissertation for my EDD, and so. You know, having the transfer student identity and as well as the present student lens, it allows me to see things from a student's perspective. So those inquiries that students make to me, you know, I can look at them in context. And so when I look at our students that come to Cal State LA as transfer students, a lot of times um, I will see fear, uh, you know, of the library. Um, just in regards to the unknown. Um, and what a lot of students will convey or communicate to me is that they either weren't provided the opportunity to access these resources at their community college, or they didn't feel comfortable doing so. And in some cases, they will say, well, it, it just, you know, wasn't necessary because at the community college, there are a number of different um, um, I would say, you know, targets and goals. Uh, for example, you know, they may ask you, um, do you want the associate's degree with transfer? Um, do you want to transfer? Are you here for a certificate or other reasons? And so there's a cross section of individuals that may not necessarily have to access these resources and students have to get used to um, the, sometimes it's, it's just the rigor or in some cases just the basic exposure to these resources. And so it's great that we have um, the ability to try to demystify um, 
the library because it is becoming so essential. You know, in my day, I had to catch the bus a long way to get access to the same information, whereas you have it all at your fingertips. And so students will often come to me, but sometimes it's late. You know, it's like, okay, this is your senior year. You went your entire junior year without accessing this valuable resource. And a lot of times it's because, you know, establishing that connection. And it's one of the reasons why when we look at the curriculum for a transfer bridge course and we bring in a guest speaker such as Letty that, you know, not just has knowledge about the resource, but makes our students feel extremely comfortable and, and, and really wanting to ask questions based on the presentation because um, the way Julio indicated that he followed up and, you know, even just recalling some of the comments that were in the chat from our transfer bridge course, it's like, wow, this is going to be so helpful. And so when it came back that students had sought the initiative to, to follow up, um, it was great because again, I can't convey to you how often, and it's not just with the library, but students will say, well, what is that room over there? And it's, this is like their last semester here and they're just now finding about out about these valuable resources. And there are even some instances where, you know, I'll ask students, well, what has been the biggest challenge? And they'll say, I don't know what APA or MLA or Chicago is. And it's like, wow, writing styles. And it brought you to this point. And so it's good to see that students have the courage to start to uh, come out and seek the support. And, you know, it's great to have just a platform to, to address those issues and to have dialogue like this, because I looked in the chat and it's like, wow, the library is open and et cetera. And, and so information comes in all different forms, but it's great to see that our students are able to access resources, um, human resources and information literacy based resources. Because when we say literacy nowadays, it's generally information literacy, whereas back in the day, it was, well, do you have the ability to read? It's like, yes, we all have the ability to read in college, but accessing these resources can be a mystery to some. And it's great to see that, you know, we're having this dialogue and that our students have a platform to talk from their perspective. So, so again, thank, thank you very much, Letty. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Lorena, go ahead. You wanna you wanna add? Yes, I wanna support uh, about Mr. Uh, Wilson at all about this one because it's part of my experience. Uh, when when we had a okay, we had a pandemic, right? But uh, when I started in Castle part of my barriers was I don't have a computer, I don't have an internet. What can I do after that? So uh, I remember EOP opened the panel about uh, research and, and all the items on there. And Miss uh, Miss Leticia Terrones wasn't there. I remember. I never forgot in my life. And when I listened all the resource, uh, the people presentation. Ms. Leticia talked about the resource about uh, the library, the links, and research the study rooms. And I copied her her uh, her link and everything. And believe me, uh, when I contacted her and I opened the appointment with her, she started helping me. She started support to me. And after my EPS is three point ninety a in this moment, I got a couple of scholarly shift, uh, almost $3,000. And it's very important, all the information you look in the chat, copy, copy and pass in your piece of paper, try to contact to the people like Mr. Steven, uh, Ms. Leticia Terrones, any people working in Castellet. Because when you make a relationship uh, in a standard of professional, you can support to you in everything. Ms. Leticia Terrones, she's my mentor in this moment. She support to me, she, she's helped me. And she made my, uh, she made easy my life. 
And next year, if it's everything okay, I finish my uh, voucher degree. Uh, thank you so much, Lorena. But I do want to say that, you know, um, most of all the effort really comes from you and from the students, you know, because um, we're, you know, speaking as a librarian, and I'm going to ask another question right now about what is the research consultation. And then maybe that question will lead us to the, you know, to the question and answer. But I want to say, like, you know, we're here. I'll speak for myself as a librarian to provide information about these different resources that are here to support you. But really, the big difference happens when the student reaches out their hand. We reach out our hand through like a presentation like today. Perhaps you saw the presentation in the summer, something like that. And we give the links, right? But the big difference, the way it's going to make uh, success in your life or make a difference in your life is if you activate those services. If you actually like send me an email and write me, hey, um, Letty, you did this presentation. You know, I wanted to I have a question and you don't even really need to know exactly what is your question because believe it or not, that's what like one of the main library librarian trainings, you know, you, you have to get a master's degree to be a librarian. One of the things that we get trained on is how to um, do what is called a reference interview like library speak for actually just having a conversation that helps students identify the actual question that they're needing to ask to get the actual information that they need. You know, because sometimes we don't even really know how to ask the question. We just know we have we have we need something or need help with something, but we actually don't know how to verbalize it yet. Librarians are trained to help you get to that point of verbalizing what your need is. So um, I want to ask, I think this will be maybe our second to the last question about um, Lorena and Julio, your experience in the research consultation. Like, what is that exactly? Because we've talked about that a lot. What actually happens? How long is it when you when you set it up? How do you set it up? What do you bring to it? Um, because I imagine and I'm hoping that many of the students here after today's presentation are going to want to email either me or another librarian to set up a consultation, um, especially because transfer students, you're already coming in with units. And so a lot of the classes you're taking are upper division or they're right in your in your major. And so you need more precise help from the librarian. You need more specific information, data or articles that are academic, like you need more um, specialized research, more advanced research help. So Julio and Lorena, well, I'll begin with Julio. What does that actual process of the research consultation look like? Julio? Yes, uh, thank you for asking that question. Is is The process is pretty simple. Um, there's two options. Uh, my preferred option is emailing uh, Leticia directly, which she's the person that, uh, that I've been working directly. Uh, so I email her, set up an appointment, um, there's uh, this called, uh, this type of uh, consultation is reference and instructions, or you can actually go to uh, calcela.edu or slash library, and you have an options of different uh, librarians, and you can set up an appointment, um, and it's approximately 30 minutes. Um, uh, you uh, have to have, you don't have to have the question like Ms. Letty uh, just uh, pointed out right now, but, um, I like to have I had to write down different questions before going there, so she can uh, so it will be easier for me to understand what I'm asking, and for them to help me out as well. Um, and lastly, um, just to mention a little bit about the consultations, uh, it's important that if you actually making a consultation, maintain the 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 that appointment because. If, if you don't use it, then uh, another student could have used that specific spot, but uh, because A or B or X reason you couldn't attend it, uh, then all the person, other people get gets affected as well. So I encourage you, if you're going to um, uh, proceed with the library consultation, just make sure to keep it. And if not, just email them before um, so they can access that appointment to somebody else. Julio, could you say real quick some of the things that we've done in the research consultation specific to your to your courses? Yeah, um, 
one of my personally one of my uh, challenges have been uh, format and gram grammar uh, just grammatically just completing sentences uh, correctly and also the format of APA and how to properly citate uh, and make the reference at the end of the of the research. So, uh, and this consultation has been helped me tremendously. I feel that I'm not a pro about it, but now I know how to actually cite uh, different, um, um, you know, books or um, I know what the format to follow because of the, the system that has been given to me. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing that. How about you, Lorena? What what has the research consultation looked like for you? Uh, usually, in in my case, I, I I open the consultation online. Online is very good research when I can research a consultation on the library, because uh, the navigator or the link they had all the states and pros in process. How do you? need to do, how's the person you need contact in there. And uh, when you reserve, when, when you open the appointment, you can add the people who is a uh, support to and depends, you your depends your topic. In my case, I'm looking for uh, Ms. Leticia Terrones. And, uh, and it's impact for me because uh, they broken like a grammar, uh, use a uh, grammarly uh, tools, writing center after that, uh, styles about uh, my essays and articles, research uh, for the database. It's part of my experience. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing that, Lorena. Um, I, I'm putting in here into the chat, like different things you can do in a consultation. So you can ask questions about citation. You can also um, ask questions about how exactly do you search a database to find what are called peer reviewed or scholarly articles that you need to cite for your college papers. You can even um, ask a question like how to get started um, with research. Like how do you actually start from a brand new topic um, and so, um, so right here, I, I want to sort of segue into um, maybe like the last question that'll take us to about 520. Um, and the question really is a question about um, like uh, what, what, what sort of, um, well, it's several of them. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put all of them into the chat. Okay. Um, but they're pretty much like last parting words that um, you would like to leave um, for our transfer students. And this time around, I'll start with Steven and then um, Lorena, you'll be next and then Julio. So the questions are that a lot of times students um, experience kind of like these feelings of being overwhelmed or sometimes in turn, you feel like a lack of motivation because it just seems too much. Like I can't figure out how this system of Caltech LA works. Um, and so, um, or, or you might feel uncertain, you know, about like, wow, I'm putting all this effort, but like, what's the goal, the future goal, and can I attain it? Um, that also translates into like that affects our, our well being, our mental health, oftentimes. So, what sorts of um, things or last, like, what would you want to say to our transfer students that are listening today about um, any piece of advice or tools that you can give to us? Um, that kind of talk about all of these things together, all of these questions that are here. And students that are listening, if you have some good tips too or resources, please feel free to drop them in the chat as well. You could answer these questions too. So we'll start with Steven. Wow. Uh, thank you so much, Letty. Um, you know, for me, um, I think it's um, perspective taking and the frame of reference that I utilize um, as a graduate student, right? Um, because, um, you know, for our students, one of the things about being in a doctoral program is as a class, you know, we have um, research consultations as a unit, generally on a Saturday with one of the, with the assigned university librarian as, as we're requesting that you do, except one of the great benefits that you have is to request a personal consultation Granted, we can too, 
But when we're first put in that context, if you go into any room with 20, 25 people, they're going to be at different skill levels, right? And at some, at some point, the information is going over some people's heads and under other people's heads. And so bringing folks to a consensus about what instruction should look like that day is often difficult. And you oftentimes see that the librarian has to end up more or less managing personalities, right? Because it's hard to instruct from here, here, and here without losing someone's interest, et cetera. With you being provided the benefit of having that one-on-one -on -one consultation, you get the opportunity to go at your own pace. You get, uh, you get the chance to ask targeted questions that impact the writing style that's prevalent in your major. And so it, 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 it's very helpful to be able to ask more detailed questions without someone off to the side huffing or sighing or beginning to look disinterested because they may not perceive it as a distraction, but no one wants to be perceived as like a nuisance, right? Uh, but no one also wants to be you know, disrespected by someone else. This format allows you access to um, a knowledgeable, insightful person that is willing to support you through a process where you can learn effectively because it is your access to information. And it's done in such a great context nowadays because you know you can look up literature not just while the library is open but you know in the middle of the night when things are quiet you can kind of test it out but then you can also go back for confirmation and so i've seen this part um really firsthand in regards to you know it's still a mystery for some because the the challenge for me um you know as um let's 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 call uh let's call me a seasoned learner, right? Is the, the technology part. And so even there, where do I access resources in what format? What does this mean? Um, I need help understanding the context. And I'm able to convey some of these um, thoughts to our students to where we share and communicate ideas and they'll start to say, well, you, you know, you're having a challenge with this. And I try to, show you know uh, my students our students where the gaps are and that i have them too and that learning is a lifelong process so that it's not intimidating it's like and don't feel overwhelmed that you don't know it because that's the reason why you're there but if you don't access the resources and it's like letty indicated the walls, if you feel like the walls are closing in on you, it can become a source of stress and angst. And so this gives you an opportunity to kind of mitigate those, those pressures and to really access the resource in a comfortable environment at a pace that's good for you. So, you know, thank you again. I, you know, I highly recommend utilizing the resources because it is something that is student-centered and very thoughtful. So thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Julio, do you want to say some last uh, parting words before we segue into the Q and A? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I have experienced um, that imposter syndrome that uh, Mr. Wilson and you have been talking about, and I just uh, want to say that just know that the information that you know is available for you, uh, and that if you don't know, you can ask those questions just to reinforce what Mr. Stephen just said right now. And there's the help, the, 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 the resources and the tools and the help is there. Uh, just know that you have to just look for it. Yeah, thanks, Julio. How about you, Lorena? What are some, um, some words of wisdom to leave us with? I recommend to everybody, ask for support. Don't impose in front of you barriers. Open your space if you love or if you had a uh, if you need to study. Make you access your confirmation. The research, the research and support program is part of the give me in my experience a solid support system in my academic world. world. Okay. Yes, those are all really um, really important um, pieces of advice um, that you've all shared with us today. 
And I also want to just read um, something that um, that Nakia put into the chat. Um, uh, Nakia wrote, I think as transfer students, one of the hardest things is getting started in new environments, but it is so beneficial to use these available resources and kind of overcome that initial fear that we have when we first transfer. So I want to use that. Um, we have um, about seven minutes or so for a question and answer. And I kind of want to use um, that uh, what Nakia wrote and then also the different um, pieces of advice and recommendations that we just heard right now um, to ask um, any of the students if you want to share um, if, or if you, perhaps you want to unmic and elaborate a little bit on that, Nakia, or any of the students if you want to share some recommendations um, or some pros and cons for using the library or anything like that. Um, we do have a, a question and answer time. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and say just to, I, I'm exactly the person Mr. Stevens, I think Mr. Stevens or Stevenson um, was saying about, you know, being in your last semester and just thinking, God, all these resources existed and I didn't even use them. Um, I transferred during the pandemic, so I couldn't even use them. The libraries were closed. Um, I just tried to master learning how to use the online resources. So um, it would be great to hear if people, for those students that are yet to be comfortable to use those resources physically, like face-to-face -face, about online um, resources at the library. Um, but yeah, and anyone who just transferred, definitely take advantage if you can. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, um, Amna. And I, I also wanna say that, um, you know, like we all, we have our, the process that we take in our educational journey. Um, sometimes we might feel like, oh, I missed out on that. Or I, you know, that wasn't available or how come I didn't know that. But um, once you do find out about something, even if it's your last semester, um, it still gives you an opportunity to either um, share that information or also um, take advantage of it, even if it's you know in the last semester. For instance, when I was long ago, back in the early 90s, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I never took advantage of office hours with a professor, like, cause I was just so scared of going and I was like, what do I say? What do I do? You know, and then I'm gonna sound dumb. That was, those are my big fears, right? When now looking back at, you know, talking to like, if I were to give myself some advice, looking back, um, it's okay to make mistakes like that because that's part of the college undergraduate experience, even it's part of the graduate experience. A lot of people earlier in the chat, when I asked, you know, what are your aspirations? Many of you have aspirations for graduate school. When you think about graduate school, it's really self-directed. A lot of that research that you're doing as a graduate student. And I'm also a graduate student too, by the way. So I'm also kind of in that process with you students. Like I'm also in that process of like having to write papers and having to research and also balancing a job, like all that stuff, right? So um, so you have all of my empathy, you know, a student to student, um, but you're really, what you're doing both as like upper division work as a transfer student, and then if you go on to graduate school, is you're really kind of taking hold of your own educational journey. And there's a lot of things that sort of move us in directions education-wise. But there's a lot of other things too that we have power in and we can empower ourselves. And one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to really challenge yourself to take risks. Take risks educationally, specifically is what I mean. Well, so for instance, you have a friendly face here, right? Me, Leti Terones as the librarian for EOP. You can make a consultation for me and say, hey Leti, like I have to talk to my professor about this or this. Like, how do you do uh, office hours? How do you prepare? I can help you with that. I'm sure also at EOP, um, some of the advisors and the mentors at EOP can help you walk through that process. Um, so there's people out here that are friendly people that have been through the process too, you know, that have had these experiences of feeling like, 
afraid, just totally afraid. And like, I don't want to stand out. That's how I used to feel. And we can help you overcome that because really, um, one of the worst places to be when you're a learner, when you're in like, especially like a, in higher education is like feeling like, wow, people know things and I don't know things. And I know that I don't know that thing that everybody else seems to know. So find the people, find your mentors that can help you, that you can ask that question to with some vulnerability, you know, with not being afraid. And they can show you the actual step-by-step of like, what do you do in an office hours? In the chat, I also put a link to the other sessions that we're going to have. Um, you know, this is the kickoff of Library Live. We're going to have um, October 4th, a really important workshop on how to search the one search, like how to search the opening page of the library. On October 11th and 14th, I'm also going to give uh, presentations on how to search the academic databases. So these are these are things that you can do on your own. We're also going to record um, the October 4th one, so you can look at that later. Um, but I kind of wanted to just sort of leave you with that, that um, there's always kind of an opportunity to flip the, like flip the coin so that you um, become a narrative of empowerment, right? Because there's, there's a lot of challenges that we have, but there's also the other story too about how like we make it happen. And you're the perfect people that show that reality because you've had to like do all the papers for transferring schools you had to like earn all the credits you had to like now you're in this new environment you see what i mean so um so i think with that we're like one more minute left so i want to ask one last time does anybody want to say some last final words um julio lorena or steven or anybody else um, and then we'll conclude today's session. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it because uh, sometimes I'm embarrassed to speak. Usually, English is my second language, so I'm my best. But uh, when I'm trying to tell it, ask questions, contact me. Okay, uh, Julio, did you want to speak? Oh, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for everybody attended to this uh, conversation. And we also want to invite you to our um, library club. We're going to be uh, meeting every Friday at 2 p.m. And uh, the lead of uh, Mrs. Leticia Terrones. And um, yeah, we welcome you. If you have any questions, you can just uh, let us know. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, for me in closing, just seeing the uh, the, the one search workshops, and um, I I can speak firsthand. They're extremely helpful. I'm still learning these processes um, every day, and so oftentimes I look through the same lenses as you. And it's good to just caucus and get support from those around you. It makes us all better and it utilizes a very valuable resources. So, um, you know, stay positive and move forward. It's a great resource. Um, and thank you again, Leti, for uh, just being so supportive of uh, transfer students, EOP students, all Cal State LA students, because, you know, I've, um, you know, consulted with different librarians when I've had issues that were at hand. And, and I've never been turned away by anyone. So it's an extremely positive and empowering resource. So, you know, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Um, all of our panelists, Stephen Wilson, Julio Velasquez, Lorena Corona. And also thank you so much to all the students that are in the room, in the Zoom room today, because without you, we wouldn't have these sorts of events. And so hopefully there's some information, a piece or two that you can grab from the chat um, and um, feel free to reach out. That's really, really the key. 
And um, if you want to join the, the Transfer Student Library Club, it's a brand new club that we're starting out with. Um, the information is in the chat. It's open to everybody. And also, I, I encourage you to check out um, the library uh, calendar because uh, we have a lot of um, all of the events that are coming up, the workshop events, the other student panels that are going to happen. They're all they will all be posted on the library calendar page. So these are um, the last two links that I'm going to post here. And um, and I look forward uh, to the emails. I look forward to getting your emails in my inbox so we can set up a consultation and get started. All right, everyone, thank you so much. And I'll go ahead and stop the recording now.